What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful.com, here with the name you know. And you got to know her a little bit more after she appeared on AEW Dark. Alex Grassi, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I, I mentioned to you off the air, Taylor Hendricks wrote an article about you, and I was like, you know what? I need to reach out to her. I need to get an interview in. And you've, you've had a very busy 2020, a lot of stuff happening, a lot of stuff, even stuff that like fell out, like you've had a very busy year. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It feels like, yeah, a bunch of busyness of just like things happening, whether it's not happening or not, like it's, it's been a wild year for sure. How has that affected things for you as an independent wrestler who is likely looking to, to land somewhere? Yeah, that affected it a lot because I started the year off pretty early. Um, I was in Mexico with CMLL. And then while I was there, that's when um, like I got the invitation to go back to the performance center. And then like I was had all these plans to go like work with Ring of Honor and all this stuff. And it's like pretty much I by of course, everyone knows like mid-March, it's like <laughs> Nope. And we don't know what's going to happen in the world. Just stay in your house and don't do anything. So it's, it's been really tough because it's like you with wrestling, it's like, you want to keep that momentum, but I had to just keep telling myself, I'm like, I'm not the only one in this situation, sure. but I think like what it affected me, what affected me the most is like, I'm someone like, I love to train. I love to work out. Um, I love to stay active. And I think that's what really helps me in the ring. So I think that's, what's been, a little rough for me lately is because the only promotions that have been running are WWE and AEW. And so besides that, like all of us independents, like we've just kind of been at a standstill in a lot of the States, the gyms haven't been open. So you're trying to come up with these home workouts, but nothing's the same as training in a ring and getting yourself prepared in, in there. So that's that's been the toughest struggle I think coming back into slowly working my way back into doing matches. So you mentioned getting the call to perhaps come back to the performance center. What were you told about how that was put on hold? I mean they they put a lot of signings on hold too in general. So it is really a, a, an unusual state right now. Yeah, so I mean there was nothing that they could do about it at the moment, of course, because it was right after the NBA also announced that they were going to put everything on hold. So it's kind of like, I'm sorry, we just know we need to get y'all home and keep y'all safe. Um, and just that everyone there would have a guaranteed chance of coming back and doing another tryout. And um, But of course, like things have changed and you start to evolve like during the summer and just start to figure out like, okay, like what would be the best plan for me and this and that, because it's like circumstances are different now. And yeah. you, um, so you're just trying to play it by ear and it's really hard because no one knows like what to expect right now. So you're just kind of like sitting there and trying to take every opportunity that you are given at the moment and running with it. So you were at those tryouts that were happening, like as all this unfolded, right? I remember hearing about yeah. those where, I, people were telling me like, yeah, some people got in there, some people didn't, and they just like, they canned everything. Yeah, I was there in Florida, Ooh. and then I was sent home and flown into quarantine. <laughs> My God, that I mean, how how did you feel? I mean, were you were you intimidated? Were you scared? Disappointed? I mean, I'm sure there were a lot of emotions. Yeah, I was disappointed um, because again, you're like, I really felt like this year. I just had it in my gut that I was like, I had things lined up that I was like, so I was like, I feel like if I just like give it my all at all these places, like somewhere will work out and there will be a place that will like see something in me and um, want to give me that chance. So it's like when you're given all those chances and then taken away, um, you're just kind of like, oh, that was like the first one. So, and it takes a long time to prepare for those tryouts also. So it's like, okay, well, I trained all this, this time and it's been a little less than a year since my first tryout. Um, now I'm getting sent back home, but you're like, okay, well, maybe that wasn't what was meant to happen right now. Like I'm a very optimistic person and I know like I'm going to end up where I'm meant to end up. And I 
where I'm going to be happy at. And so I like had all these other things, but then it's like those start getting postponed and canceled. So it was just kind of like the buildup of disappointments. <laughs> so how did, how did your first one go? I remember that was probably, I, I want to say maybe spring of last year that that one. Happened? Yeah, it was in April. So, okay, yeah. um, I had flown back from stardom in Japan, the beginning of March. And then, so literally like when I came back just a little bit after that was my invitation for the, the first tryout. And I mean, I was just had my like year anniversary. So like I was still really new and still figuring things out as of now, like we're just always trying to figure things out and get better. But of course, like I was a totally different person a year ago than I am now. Um, and so it was just a kind of like go get more exposure and keep like building your name. And so, um, that was already in my mindset anyway. So I'm like, okay. And I had plans. I was already living, had already moved to Houston because I wanted to move there to work with Booker T's reality of wrestling full time. So I was like, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to continue what I already like had in motion. Like, I feel like the luck and the opportunities come to you more when you are just like working. Like my main goal all the time is like to go somewhere and get better and to keep improving. And the goal isn't the opportunities or the chance. I just hope that those come with um, them seeing that I work hard because like, I want to give people a good product and I want to be a good wrestler for them. And, also be a good wrestler for myself. Another one of those chances that unfortunately like kind of went away was the ROH women's title tournament. You were announced yeah. for that. And I mean, as we go through this, we'll talk about how many companies have had their eye on you and, and presented these, these opportunities, but that seemed like a pretty big one. How did, how did that kind of come about? And we know how it got taken away. I mean, that was at the fall yeah. of nobody. <laughs> yeah. So um, they had just, reached out and um they seemed excited about working with me which made me excited about working with them like um because it, it is a two-way street to where you feel like oh, okay this feels good like you don't want to just bring me in like you feel like i'm an asset and that tournament was just going to be like super exciting i think because they had so many great girls and known girls from the indies on the roster and so many people were looking forward to that because i they hadn't really had that in a yeah. long time so i know jonathan was, gresham has went like above and beyond like, to bring people in yeah it was like a big disappointment for us but i just felt so bad because the fans you could tell just how disappointed they were with that too yeah and it's like no i'm so sorry <laughs> And like, like I said, that's, that's nobody's fault. That's not like you or ROH or anybody did anything bad that, that cost it's, they, they clearly wanted to improve their women's division. They were taking yeah. steps to do it. I mean, they've ta taken steps to have Jonathan Gresham help run that end of things. Yeah. And I know that he was reaching out to a lot of not just established names, but up and coming names. So it was kind of, it was a yeah. bummer to see it un unfold like that. It was a real bummer. Like it again, it's like you have all these things. Like it's like this is just 2020 is the year. Yeah. <laughs> and then you feel like, what the heck is this? <laughs> you mentioned uh wrestling in CMLL. You also wrestled in stardom. What have these experiences been like for you traveling so much? Because I mean, like it's not just WWE tryouts and ROH opportunities. You're traveling the world to to gain experience. Yeah, it's their dreams come true. Like it's a dream come true to be honest. And like you get there and you're like, am I really here? <laughs> and like there are just moments. It's like even like my first match at Crooked Hall, like with Stardom. Like I just afterwards, like I just started bawling, and it's like I'm just happy because <laughs> it's like you you see it and you hear about it and you see pictures and it's like I love. Um, lucha libre and so also getting to go to mexico and you're like with such a notable like prestigious company and you're just like in arena mexico and you're just like i'm here right now and i'm training in their classes um with their students and you're just 
I'm just always trying to be a little sponge and just like soak up everything. And there was a good chance like I was going to go back there this year also. So of course, like that was another disappointment of now I don't get to go back. Um, but I, I love to train. And so like those, op those opportunities, like those were some of the best parts for me was um, going to the dojo and getting to train um, with the luchadors over there. Cause it's like, they have a whole new world that we don't necessarily have. And they have styles that maybe you'll see like here and there in America, but that's where it's like, you can really learn how to be your, um, really like take some of those things and just become an evolved wrestler even, even more and just have your own style of, I feel like taking some of the, a little bit of those styles here and there, it's like, it makes it me because it's like, I had my experience there. So I want to see a little bit of like the Japanese style or like Lucha Libre because they're all making me who I am. You also got to work a bit with the late Hana Kimura. Of course, unfortunately, we lost her a few months ago. What was that like? Because, I mean, she was so young, but, man, so established and so good at, at everything. She was considered, like, the gaijin helper because, like, she would always be like, speak English to me, and she was just so sweet. And there was a night specifically, um, I was saying, like, we were – um I think like in Osaka or something and I don't know I don't know if it was like the homesickness was getting to some of us and just some of us were like because it's like internet can be cruel too yeah. like it was just um we were just all kind of down for some reason that night and she's like like we're going to dinner and we went to dinner and we just had like the best night with her like she's always so sweet like even if it's like if I wasn't in their match she would just come up to me and be like, you okay, you feel good. And it just felt good to have someone there that you knew like genuinely cared. And she was just such a sweet soul. And like, she wanted to like learn all these like um, languages and just get better. And you could just see that. And it's like, she was a natural star like in and outside of the ring. Like she was just a presence. She walks in the room and she was that it girl. And so, yeah, that was horrible and very tough. And like all the causes with it too, is just from the internet. And so like, just hopefully people start to be aware of that, especially she was so young. Like it's hard for anybody to hear those things. And, um, but especially at that age, I, I couldn't imagine. And it had to feel good to have somebody so established and respected in your corner, willing to help you out to make sure that you were okay there. Yeah. Yeah. They, a lot of the girls and like I said, like, especially her just always just want to make sure like you feel comfortable because they know you're away from home and they know that this is different for you. And you're just, they're trying to, figure out how to fit in the best you can and do your best. And um, she was just always like so great and so sweet. And I know like she was close with a lot of the girls that that went there. So it was, it was very tough. And I'm sure they've seen dozens, if not hundreds of girls who have been through the same thing that like you all yeah. have the homesickness because this ain't new to them. They bring people over. They bring a lot of women over and a lot of women establish themselves there and figure out a lot of things there. I can't count the number of women I've talked to that, that have been like, yeah, even with language barriers, there's so much things in the ring that just clicked when I was over there that you pick up from not even being able to speak their language. Yeah. I mean, did, did you experience that as well? Oh yeah. Like day one. <laughs> but, um, that's when I thought it was so cool. So like funny story. So when I went there, like we flew in and the very next day was like the first show. So it's like, I'm already freaking terrified. Yeah. And then on top of that, so I'm like asking, I'm like, um, asking Sunny, who's kind of like helps with the foreigners because he knows English. And I'm like, okay, so like, show me where I go out from my entrance and this and that and this and that. And he's like, oh, your first match, by the way. Cause I was like, I can, at least I can watch somebody there. first. Yeah. And yeah and it's the very first match of 2019 oh. or whatever year and um 
so he's like, so I'm like, okay, like a little, like I can just watch somebody and I'll be fine. Like with that. And he's like, your first match. And he's like, oh, and you're the first person to come out. He's like, you're starting the year off. And I was like, okay. Okay. And, but, um, so I was terrified out of my mind, but, um, that match specifically, I like had no clicking. <laughs> Oh, but man. after that like once I was a little like relaxed and, like um we had gotten to go to training and I figured it out that throughout the process I agree a hundred percent with what those other girls were saying it's like we can just like go out there and make magic and it felt good and it's like they they know what they're doing and it's like they're bringing you up to try to be at like to where you're able to to comprehend and work and you're just like I felt like I grew so much over there that um I'm still always scared and always anxious and like nervous before matches but like when I came back to America like I was like if I gain anything from that it's that I feel like I can go in the ring with anybody yeah so uh, I mentioned how it seems like you've gotten a look from every company Last year, there was an Impact uh, Reality of Wrestling like dual show, and you worked Jordan Grace, who is yeah. huge in Impact Wrestling and is wrestling in general. Did you get any feedback from Impact there, or was that more of a product of you being Reality of Wrestling, her being Impact? I mean, it's hard to imagine they didn't have their eye on you at that point. Yeah, so of course, it's like I am the product of Reality of Wrestling um, at that point. But then when they came to Texas, that's when – um they reached out to reality wrestling to bring um a few of us back and so we got to do like some matches there when they um had the pay-per-view in dallas um so that's what they had and it's like really good feedback and everything but um yeah it, it was a little before i think the second child so it's things happen so fast with anybody it's like okay well now at this point it's like we're not going to talk to anyone about bringing them in again because <laughs> yeah. we don't even know what we're going to do with our own talent that uh, that venue i think it was at the world gym i've noticed that's become just like that's becoming a go-to for women's wrestling with the ladies night out stuff that, that happens there too i mean that's that's becoming a place that that a lot of women are going and they're making a name for themselves in that world gym arena yeah, I love that place. So where I came from before and when I came to check out Reality of Wrestling for the first time, like I came from like what you think of like your beginning training centers, like yeah. a warehouse. We're in Texas, one little fan, <laughs> one ring in there. And um, I would have like friends who wrestled over there and they would like tell me and it was almost like a fantasy. Like they'd be like, there's three rings <laughs> and air conditioning. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> You're lying. <laughs> so like the first time I went over there, I was like, man, there's weights. Like what <laughs> is this? A locker room? Like I thought it was the best place ever. And I was like, I'm definitely moving here. <laughs> How directly did you work with Booker T there? Do you still get feedback from him? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, like recently he's been doing the online courses for film study, but that's what we would do, um, pretty much every week over there. Like that's the training you'd get with Booker. Like sometimes, so you could do like some five minute matches with him and he'd like critique you on the spot. Um, but really it helps so much when we do have film study with Booker because he'll let, he'll allow you to pick any match you want, but he'll also like have some, um, matches whether old or new and just pick out and critique those wrestlers so you're you're seeing that or like things he likes and things he doesn't like and um he knows us so well that he's like yeah you do this <laughs> <laughs> so, so is he getting really, in there and doing these ma matches with you all like these five minute matches no he'll like watch you oh, okay. but just like he'll give all the feedback afterwards but i mean sometimes he'll get in there and yeah. be like like this <laughs> <laughs> So who else have you looked at and you've seen that, that has helped you along the way, whether it be just friendly advice or 
or taking you aside and saying, okay, work on this or help or, or, or anything like that? Uh, one of the most prominent people in my life for sure has been Thunder Rosa. Oh, she's great. Um, just from the beginning, I mean, she um, came to San Antonio, of course, and that's where I was training. And um, she got, she has gotten to see me grow before I've even had my first match. And her and her husband owned Sabotage Wrestling at the time. And um, I would ring announce for them before I even had matches because she's like, I just want you to be out there and like get comfortable. And I want people to know who you are already. Like she's, she's always been so invested in investing in us, which feels so good. And it's like, she has never changed one bit. Like she just, she's, she's tough on me for sure. <laughs> She, like, she doesn't like, oh, want anybody to look bad. That's what I've noticed. She doesn't want anybody to look bad. Exactly. Exactly. And um, like we have those conversations and she's like, you know, I'm so tough on you because I just know you have it and I know you're going to make it and I care so much. And I was like, I know because I'm, I'm so like, I, I do, I was coached all my life and played competitive sports. So it's like, I know like getting screamed at and stuff is coming from love. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's going to end up being like one of the most powerful women in wrestling, like legitimately, because she has her hands in everything. I know that she sat in on a lot of the wow production stuff. And I mean, like they're doing the mission pro thing. She told me if NWA offered it up, she would love to help them like book and stuff. And I think she'd be more than capable of that. I, oh, I yeah. She's and, been doing it. Yeah. I, I think that she she's legitimately going to, going to be there. And also for somebody like you who has progressed so fast, it has to be like maybe some more credence from her because she got thrown right into the fire. Like she was immediately like, "Okay, here's stardom. Here's Lucha Underground. You're barely you're barely trained. Here you go." I mean, she's she's gone through all that. Yeah, and I think that's why she would see that because it's like, um, it's the same thing. I always compare that. I was like, I'm thrown in the fire, thrown yeah. into the sharks. Like, and it's kind of like, ready or not, get ready. <laughs> And so, so um, cause I, like, I celebrated my one year anniversary in Japan at stardom. And it's like, I, that's when I was like, I never like, not, I don't take any of those experiences for granted because I know how many girls want to be there. And I know how many girls work really hard to be there. And, um, some don't get the opportunity as fast and if they even get the opportunity. And so that's when I feel like, I have to work even harder and um, really take advantage of all these things because I don't want it to just be like all these things are on my resume. Like I want to be able to deliver what, what you see on paper. So you got the call to come to AEW and do dark. And we have seen tons of talent like established and make a name on that show. Uh, who reaches out to you? Who says, Hey, let's get you into AEW. Yeah, so uh, I had talked to um, QT Marshall, so he was just, it was kind of like, again, it happens out of nowhere when it's like, oh, are you available these days? And it's like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what, I mean, would, was that the type of thing that you would have probably made work even if you weren't available those days? Because it is a big opportunity. Oh, yeah, I would have made it work no matter what, because <sighs> um, I just was really just trying to like, keep poking at them a little yeah. bit and like I was like hmm so like the last thing I did I um I was like okay I'm gonna quit just tweeting and replying <laughs> to Sheeta and I'm like because I'm like I know they see this yes and I was like what maybe like gives it like that last little like oomph like okay like let's let's bring her in and I was like yeah. I'm gonna talk and tell them how I feel <laughs> And I posted like a promo and, and everything. And I was like, just so people can like feel my emotion a little bit. And it's not just like on a Twitter keyboard. Like that's, I love promos so much, like just to be able. So it's like, you get a little bit more about like who I am also, because a lot of people still don't really know me. Cause it's like, I mean, I'm two and a, two and a half years. in, yeah. so it's like some people have heard of me or not heard of me and so just so they can kind of see like my personality a little bit too and it's not like me saying typing like 
get a little like feel for who I am and that I do want to be somewhere that sees something in me and that I am I do work hard and I want to keep working hard and I want to go somewhere where I can grow and really be an asset for a company. Did you get face to face with Sheeta at any point backstage? Did you happen to bump into her, run into her at all? Oh yeah, I'm so nice. I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> My God. So, as far as the match uh, with Penelope, did you get any feedback from anybody backstage? Any any positive reinforcement? Anything that you should work on? How was that? Yeah, a lot of positive feedback, just like that a lot of compliments on like my energy and um my look and stuff like that so um the next step is like trying to um kind of trying to set myself apart and showing that it's like like i want to be brought in as a competitor like i want to compete i want to be in a division and um really show them what I can bring to the table because like whatever they need from me, like I'm, I'm going to bring it. It's one of those things like ready or not. Like, even if you tell me something I don't think I'm ready for, like I will get myself ready and like, I will deliver the best I can. So hopefully opportunities keep going. Cause I had, a, everyone was so great and it really did feel like a great environment. And I was like, this just feels comfortable. And that, that's what I want. Like, I want to be somewhere where I'm like, this feels like it's your home away from home, even though it's work. So feel somewhere where it's like, I would be spending the majority of my time here if I get that chance to come back. So it's like, I really wanted to test that out too. Like, it was like, okay, I'm going there. I'm getting brought in to, to do a job and to work. But like, I just kind of wanted to feel it for myself also, because it has to be a two-way street. Were there a lot of familiar faces there? Like, did you know a lot of these people personally? Because, I mean, you've worked the independent circuit with, I'm sure, plenty of these people. Oh, yeah. Like, all the Texas people. Like, you have Sammy, um, yeah. Ricky Starks, and then Thunder Rosa was there, which really helped me a lot. I would say. <laughs> uh, just to kind of have her. So, I'd be like, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> So was there anybody specifically that came up to you and went out of their way to, to kind of help? Or was it kind of just a general general feedback thing? Yeah, like um, I talked to Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes, and um, I felt really good about our conversations. And um, yeah, those were the ones that like stuck out the most, of course, because yeah. <laughs> they're pretty sure. important people. <laughs> sure. Uh, I, Dustin Rhodes, man, he is still doing it and doing it really good. Like he's done some of the best work I've ever seen him do in the last year and a half of his career. And it's, it's really amazing. But it's uh, crazy. yeah, needless to say, you've gotten looks by Ring of Honor, WWE, AEW, Impact. For, for you as a free agent right now, it very much from the outside looking in looks like, oh, well, she'd be 100% signed if it wasn't for COVID-19 right now. How do you kind of balance that mentally, physically, really anything, knowing that you are in demand and getting looks in a time that's just unprecedented? Nobody could have predicted this. Yeah, I think what's kind of been tough through all this for me too, because like I said, like when I knew I kind of had these opportunities at the beginning of the year. You look at them and you're like, I'm going to bust my butt. I feel like something good will happen from something. Yeah. And again, like with what I was saying with the working hard, and I feel like um, you tend to have more luck and more opportunities, the harder you work and, and all that, like I tend to um, look at like, I tend to get validation from those opportunities. So then all these opportunities are going away. So then you start to get like those doubts about yourself. Well, it's like, well, maybe I'm not as good as I think, or maybe they didn't want me as much as they say, or maybe this just because it, but you have to get that out of your head because it's, it's not that. And it's like a lot of things can't happen the way they would usually happen right now. Um, and so that's why it was like, this is probably, um, getting to go over to AEW was like the first thing that it's like all summer that I'm like, 
okay, I'm, I'm given another gift that I didn't even expect. So what, what can I do with this? And I went in there just like I do any other situation is that I'm going in there to learn and I'm going in there to improve and use the resources that are there. I mean, like you're surrounded by legends, you're surrounded by such good talent. And so I wanted to take, like, if I take anything from that experience, it's, I want to be better than I was yesterday. Let's talk and about your Instagram aesthetic. <laughs> it's masterful. I see that. And so, like, I, I got social media managers that are like, oh, if you want to grow your Instagram following, do an aesthetic. And I see yours and I'm like, I can't put in that much work. I'm not that good at it. <laughs> it's, oh it's, my gosh. it's marvelous. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate that. It's just all pink. It's easy when you have a color. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to pull out some baby blue or something and like, like counteract this. I, I just look at it and I'm like, oh man. I, even if I tried, no, I, I wouldn't be trying. that good at it. Yeah, I've been trying to like work on it a little bit because it's like you. We learned a little bit of that in college because like, of course, I did like journalism and you have like the branding yeah. and a little bit of that. But it's like my focus wasn't on the branding and marketing, so I don't know as much as other people yeah. do with. But I have um, a friend from college who worked with the A&M football team and then went and worked with Adidas and works with SMU and had worked with Von Miller and all these other people. Uh. And um, I was like, why am I not using my resources? <laughs> and I reached out to him recently and actually like, um, like hired him to pretty much be like, help, just help me yeah. make this more appealing to like my brand and everything. And I was like, I feel like you can visit like, definitely see a difference from starting to work with him than from before. Well, as we wrap up, I noticed you were, your name is one of those added to the virtual basement wrestling roster. They, they've announced the name, the, the wrestling code. How did that come about? How do you feel about that? Were, and also, were you a gamer? <laughs> you know, it's so funny is I play games all the time when I was little, but it's like the games that <laughs> You wouldn't expect like I loved like the Britney Spears dance game on PS4 <laughs> or PS2 and like Mary Kate and Ashley and Frogger. But um yeah, like so when they reached out to me, it's one of those things that it's like this isn't real. This isn't real. <laughs> but um, because it was pretty early on and they were just saying, like, hey, we we're making this like wrestling video game, we'd love to make you um, someone on the roster. I'm like, well, this sounds really cool. Like, yeah, why wouldn't I want to be in a video game? <laughs> and they've just been so great. Like, just from the beginning, they're like, we want you to be along for the process to make sure, like, you're happy with everything, too. And um, they have done that. And just the people that they've added to the roster um, since then and just seeing some samples of like what the game is going to look like and what some of the characters are going to look like. And it's like, this is, this is going to be some something it's going to be really cool. So, I mean, to imagine like being on a video game, like, like to me, I'm like, why me? <laughs> like, like that's really cool. That's a huge compliment, but me, <laughs> that has to feel like one of those, I made it moments. Like when you got into wrestling, I'm sure there were times when, things looked really tough and then you're you're getting people hitting you up saying hey we want you in this video game yeah it it definitely like helps your feeling and your feelings and your vibe when like this year has been a lot of like feeling like you're in a slump and feeling like i don't know what's next um so it's like i was still feeling that way sometimes like i don't know what's next but yeah. that's also kind of what's exciting at the same time because at the beginning of the of the year, um, I know one of my goals was to go work with AEW, but I didn't really know if it was going to happen or not. And especially with all that has happened recently um, in the world, it was like, well, it, this might just not be the year. And so um, blessings are still there and there's still a lot of good to go around and we can still finish the year strong. So that's just what I'm trying to focus on is focus on all those good things. Well, Alex, let the people know where they can follow you on social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, where they can see that, that wonderful aesthetic of yours. <laughs> yeah. So my Twitter and Instagram are the same. It's Alex Gracia and the number three. Um, 
And yeah, that's where I'm probably the most active for sure. Well, guys, check her out. Alex, thank you so much for taking the time and being so generous with your time. I no, appreciate thank it. you for having me. I appreciate it. Guys, until next time, we're out.